Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number two in our incredible new tutorial series where you are unleashing the power of your Pico W. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using <clears throat> the SunFounder kit for the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, I know a lot of you guys already have your gear, but if you don't, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. You can hop over there and pick this kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. First of all, let's review what we did last week. <clears throat> last week, we installed MicroPython on the Pico W board. We installed Thonny on the PC, and we wrote our first few programs. And most importantly, we wrote a program that started interacting with the GPIO pins, the general purpose input output pins. And specifically, we were interacting with that pin that was connected to the LED. And I showed you the LED on the Pico W board. I showed you how you could turn the, the LED on. I showed you how you could turn the LED off. And then I gave you the homework assignment <clears throat> to write your own program from scratch and see how fast you could blink the LED and still perceive it as blinking. And then uh, you were to leave a comment down below in the in that lesson <clears throat> about what the fastest uh, what the fastest uh, speed was that you could do. I also gave you the assignment of posting your solution to YouTube, linking back to this video, and then in a comment below, link over to your homework solution. How many of you guys actually did the homework? If you did the homework, leave a comment down below. I am legend double chest bump, or if you didn't do the homework, I folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Now that was a pretty easy homework, but what I wanted you to do is I wanted you to start getting in the habit of having a homework assignment, doing it on your own, and then posting your solution to YouTube, because I want you guys to start looking at each other's solutions, commenting on each other's solutions, and start developing a little bit of a sense of community around this particular series series of video lessons. So hopefully you guys will do that. So that's what we did last week. And then this week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use the breadboard. Okay. Because when we look inside of the Pico W kit, there's all times types of exciting electronic componentry. And we want to start using those components in the kits and building projects based on those components using the Pico W. But in order to do that, we we have to understand how the breadboard works. Now, the problem is a lot of people build projects, but they really don't understand what the breadboard is doing. And so they're just copying exactly what they're seeing the instructor doing, but they're really not understanding it. I want to take one lesson today and make sure that you understand how the breadboard works. And I'm going to do that by building a very simple circuit, which is an external LED. Okay. Last week, we linked the internal, the onboard LED this week, we're going to build a circuit on the breadboard and that external LED we're going to, we're going to blink. And then you are going to really understand how the breadboard works. Sound good? I hope it does. <clears throat> so let's see here. I am going to switch over to the uh, sketch pad view here. Give me a second to get out of your way and let's see, it should pop up here. <clears throat> It takes a second for the sketch pad to pop up, and I always a little bit panic, hoping that it is really going to show up. But let's see. Let's say that what we want to do is we want to build an external circuit for an LED. And so if we're going to do that, the first thing we are going to need 
is we are going to need a power supply. So we are going to need a plus and a minus power supply. Now in general, that plus or minus power supply, it could be a battery. It could be any type of different voltage supply. For us, what are we going to do? It's going to be one of the GPIO pins. One of those GPIO pins is going to provide the voltage that we need for our circuit. Now we're going to come from there and then we're going to come to the LED. And this is the symbol for the LED. It looks like that. Now you notice that it's asymmetric. It's, it's not the same if we mirrored imaged it. And what you have to see is this side that goes back to the plus, that that is the long leg. That is the long leg of the LED. So if you look at your LEDs, you're going to see there's a long leg and a short leg. The long leg always points back to the positive. It always points back to the positive connection. Okay, now an LED is very unstable. So if you just apply a voltage to it, it's very likely that that voltage is going to run away and then your LED will burn out. Okay, you'll let the smoke out and the LED will not work without the smoke. And once you let the smoke out, it's very hard to get the smoke back in. So in order to not fry or smoke your LED, what you have to do is you have to put a current limiting resistor in and that resistor will resist the flow of current and it will prevent a runaway current uh, condition so you will never burn out your LED. So we're going to come down here and we're going to put that LED in the circuit and then we're going to go back to the negative connection. And typically for LEDs, you will use something like 220 ohms something like that. It's a small resistor, but it keeps you from burning out your, uh, it keeps you from burning out your LED, your LED. Now, if that one side is the long leg, then the other side is the what? The other side is the short leg. So we've got short leg here and we've got long leg here. So this is the circuit that we want to build. And this is kind of a schematic. But now what we've got to do is we've got to take this kind of conceptual drawing and we have to turn it into something physical. So I'm going to come over here and let's see if we can grab a picture of the Raspberry Pi. And let me get it down here. Okay. And so this you can see, uh, <clears throat> done. That's good. You can see here we have our breadboard, which we're going to learn how to use today. And then we are going to plug our Pico W into it. And then we're going to hook up the circuit that I've shown up here. But really before doing that, <clears throat> what we have to do is we have to learn how the PC board works. And so uh, the breadboard works. And so let me come over here to this view of a breadboard. And this, I think, will really help you understand how it works. You can see uh, the breadboard. If you look at a picture of it, you can think of it as a bunch of rows of holes, rows of holes, and a bunch of columns of holes. And this is the key to understanding the breadboard. The holes along columns are connected. Okay, the holes along columns are connected. Do you see this here? So this hole is connected to this, to this, to this, to this. Holes along rows are not connected. So if I put a component in this hole and this hole, it would not be connected. Those two components would not be connected. If I put a component here, a leg of a component here, and a leg of a different component here, those two legs would make a connection. Why? Because they are in a common column. Okay, now there's one little place that that doesn't apply, and that is as we jump across the center trench, we break those connections. So this group of holes are all connected together. This group of holes are all connected together, but this group and this group are not connected. Why? Because you're jumping over the trench. So you see between here and here, you're not connected because you're jumping across a trench. Now there's one other thing that you have to know. The 
two rows on the top are special and the two rows on the bottom are special. And so this entire top row, all the holes are connected to each other. The second row, all of those holes are connected to each other. The bottom row, all of those holes are connected together. And the second to the bottom row, all of those holes are connected together. Now, what are those useful for? Those are useful in case you want to have like lots of different grounds that you need to connect to. You could connect, let's say, this top row to ground and then every single hole on that top row it's going to be ground. You could then connect the second row to 3.3 volts, and then every one of those holes is connected to 3.3 volts. So you can create what's called a ground rail or a voltage rail, and anytime you need a ground or a voltage, you can just go connect to those. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And you guys that are old pros at this, you know, be patient because you had to learn, and I want to make sure everybody gets the chance to learn this. Okay, so let's get back to specifically <clears throat> what we are trying to build here. So this is the circuit up here. This is the circuit that we are trying to build. And so let's start that what I am going to need is I am going to need to connect to a GPIO pin to provide this voltage. Okay, I'm gonna to need to connect to a GPIO pin to uh, produce this voltage. And so therefore, what I need to do is I need to look at a, a pin out diagram for the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now you see, I have mine laid over. This one is up and down because it's a little bit easier to read. And you can see that you have 40 pins. Okay, you have 40 pins starting up here, one through 20. And then you come, then this is pin 21 through 40. So you sort of go one, two, three, four, five, down to 20, and then pin 21, and then up to pin 40. Now, the pins that we can use are the green GPIO pins. So all of these that are labeled as GP pins, these green pins, any of those we could use. So you can see it looks like we've got, you know, 20, more than 20 uh, pins that we could choose from to use. But I'm going to choose this one down here, which is physical. Uh, let me turn that off so you can see it. Turn the title off for a second. So what I'm going to use is this physical pin 20, which is GPIO pin 15. Okay. Now you've got to remember this, that this is GPIO pin 15, even though it is physically pin 20. So that's what we need to know. So I'm going to use this, this corner GPIO pin just because it's going to be a little bit easier to hook up if I use that one. Okay, so we'll come back over here. <clears throat> and now what I've got to do is I've kind of got to go from this up here that it's a schematic down to something down here. And how do I do that? Well, I've got to start with a GPIO pin, and I said I was going to do that pin 20. So I will come here, and I will connect right here, and then I will come over some convenient distance and I'm going to connect to this column. Okay, so that's just going to be a wire. Now, what is the next thing that I need? The next thing I need is the long leg of the LED. The long leg of the LED is going to connect to that. So because it's going to connect to it, it has to be in the same what? It's got to be in the same column. And so that is the long leg of the LED. And now I'll try to kind of draw the LED here. It looks something like this. And then next I have what? I have the short leg of the LED, and it's going to come and plug in here. <clears throat> Let me do that a little bit cleaner. Uh, let's say that we would plug it in right here. Okay, so that is the short leg. So this is the long leg, and this is the short leg. Like that. Does that make sense? Now, what do I need next? Now, I need that 220 ohm resistor. That connects to what? It connects to the short leg. And so the short leg is here. I need to be in the same what? I need to be in the same column. And then I'm going to come over. And then here is going to be my resistor. 
and then I'm going to come here and just connect it let's say right like that okay and now I'm all the way down to here now I have to go back and connect to what I have to go back and connect to the negative or the ground well I need to look and find where is a convenient ground so we'll come back over here and what you can see is I will turn this off just for a second you can see that if I am down here pin 20 is the GPIO pin that I am using and then if I skip one pin and then go to pin 18 I will be at a ground <clears throat> so I need to skip one go to 18 and then I will be at a ground and so let's come over here and now I will get another wire and so I'm going to connect to that same column all right and now I'm going to run a wire all the way over here and right remember we skip one and then this pin should be a ground and then I come up and I'm going to hook that up like that okay <coughs> so this picture is a physical implementation of this schematic up here does that make sense so that is what we are going to need to build now I kind of drew it out for you step by step there so that you could sort of see it come together but then this is a nicer picture of what we just did okay this is a nicer schematic of what we just did and so what our job is now our job is to come in and to build this so what are we going to need we're going to need to get out our Sun Founder kit and we're going to need to find some of these components so let me come over here where you can see this and so uh, I'll open the kit up and the first thing we are going to need is the breadboard and for me it's up on this top level and it's kind of underneath that little remote thing and there is the breadboard okay now we are going to need an LED and what I need you to do is get a red LED why a red LED because the blue and the green LEDs are for special occasion only and so today we are using a red LED so I've got the red LED there that's good and then what do we need we need a 220 ohm resistors well these this blue packet here these are your resistors and you need the one that is labeled 220 R that's 220 resistance or 220 ohms and so I find a nice big pack of them here 220 ohms and I need exactly one of them so I'll come over here and you just sort of pull it out of the tape and then pull it out of the tape and you put that over there and now we're going to be very good about putting things back together neatly so that we keep our key kit neat like that and then uh, we'll put the LEDs back hopefully the lid will close yeah we got it closed there all right okay now <clears throat> we want to build this uh, we want to build this thing okay the first thing that we are going to need to do is we're going to need to put in the Pico W okay and I'll kind of just show you here and then we'll look at a little bit closer view but I am going to put the USB to the left like I had in the picture okay and what I want to show you maybe I should switch over here and this will be a better a better view so in the upper right is what we want to build and then this is physically what we're actually working on okay and so you can see that I need to get this thing pressed in well you want to make sure that you put it in evenly because if I put it here what is the problem that I've just gen generated I haven't left any holes in that column to connect to and so what I want to do if I space it right just like this you can see that for each pin I've got two holes that I could connect to above it and then below it I've got two that I can connect to now what's very important don't come in and just jam it down on one side or jam it down on the other because if you do that you'll build you'll bend the pins so what you want to do is just kind of rock it in with even force so that they're both kind of going in at the same time and I just kind of go back and forth and it's a little hard to get in and then you've got to make sure that you've got it all the way in around that looks like I don't have it do I have it all the way in maybe not on the top so I'll press again there 
Okay, and then down there. So now that is in securely and that's in securely. Now, same thing when you go in to take this out, you can't just put your fingernail under here and pry it out on one side because that'll bend the pins over here. Or if you pry it out on this side, it's gonna bend the pins there. So you've gotta come in evenly and pull it out. And also make sure that you're not applying any force to this USB connector because it would be very, very easy to just sort of pop that USB connector off of there. Okay, guys, we have made some excellent progress. Oh, one more thing. What did we forget? We got the LED, we got the resistor, but what did we forget? We need two wires. And so let's come back over here and let's go get those two wires. I'll show you that there's some really nice little jumper wires in the kit. Wow, I just get excited every time I open this kit up and just look at all these fun, exciting components. And I know that we are going to have a lot of fun together as we work our ways through, through these components. But you see this box of wires. So I'm going to open that up. And then I'm going to find, <clears throat> I think this little red wire for me, this little red wire would be a pretty nice little size. And then I need one a little, a little longer to be the one that goes back for ground. And so there's a little bit of a longer white wire. And so I think those two would work very nicely for me. So I'll put that back in. Now the real test is, can I get the lid back on without using words that I shouldn't use, but oh yeah, okay, that's still pretty good. It's just so magical how they get these things in here and it's not so easy to uh, get them all to fit back in. Okay, so let's come over here. And so what's the next thing I need? I need that wire that is coming from the GPIO pin, that GPIO pin 15 which is physical pin 20. And so what I want you to see is, is that I'm gonna come in to that corner. Okay, are you seeing that, that corner? And then I'm just gonna press it in so now I'm hooked up to that GPIO pin. Now you let the other end come where it just sort of naturally wants to be. And so I think that naturally wants to be right about there and so boom i got it pressed in and i kind of dropped one down so i want it to come straight across like that okay so i've made the connection to the pin uh to the pin 20 which is gpio and understand that this 20 here you ignore that that this what i'm looking at is pin 20 on the board <clears throat> okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the LED in. Now the LED goes to which leg? Remember, it is the long leg. So we look at the LED, there's a long and a short leg. So we are going to go the long leg like that always goes back towards the voltage supply. So that's in. And now we're ready to put our 220 ohm resistor in. And what I like to do is kind of carefully bend that to a 90 degree angle and then carefully bend this to a 90 degree angle like that. Okay. And now this is going to go in right to the next one over right there, right? Wrong adjacent rows are not connected together. You have to be in the same column. Okay, you gotta be in the same column. And so let's get that in, that went in nicely. And then where does this one just naturally wanna go in? Right about there. Okay, and now is where we really, really, really hope that our white wire is long enough. <clears throat> but the white wire is gonna go to ground. Sorry. Okay, so the white wire is gonna go to ground. Remember we had pin 20, and then we skip one pin, and then we go to the next one, which would be right here, and that, my friend, should be a ground. That should be a ground, just like that. Now I'm gonna to try to bend this neatly, and so I need to just give a little bit of a bend here, I think, like that, and now I should be able to come into that other leg of the resistor 
which is right there. You can get that. I'm trying to keep it in your view. My builds are a little hard because I'm having to both keep it in my view and keep it where you can see it good. Okay, so you see those are in the same column. And so I think that is all hooked up well. And so now <clears throat> the next thing that we are going to do is I think that we can come in and we can just power this thing up. Now the, the program might be in there. We might still have the program in there from, uh, from last week. And so this thing might do a little something here when we plug it in uh, if that program is still in from last week. But otherwise, it should just uh, power up. So let's see if we can get this in. Okay, there it is. Okay, so that is connected up. And now we are ready to what? We are ready to see if we can program this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to fire up Thonny like that. Okay. There it is, Thonny. Okay, finally. Scaring me a little bit there that I was having trouble getting it. Okay. Let's see if you can see this. Let me, <clears throat> I'm going to try to make that font a little bit larger just to make sure that it's easy for you to see. And let's see, editor, themes and font, uh, editor font. Let's make it like a 26 and a 26. Okay, now I think that you ought to be able to, uh, I think you ought to be able to see that okay. <clears throat> and so now what we want to do is we want to write a program. We want to write a program that will turn this external LED on and off. And so if we're going to do that, it's going to be a lot like the program that we wrote last week, but it's going to be from machine import what? Pin. Pin is the method that we're going to import. Now I'm going to create red LED. Okay. And that's going to be my object. And that is going to be the method pin that we just imported. And then that is going to be, remember before we said LED pin like that, but no, now we're going to do the external GPIO pin. And that was what? Pin 15. Now you've got to make sure that you understand that. So let me come back over here to make sure that you understand that part. And what that part is, is that we are connecting to physical pin, we are connecting to physical pin 20. Physical pin 20 is GPIO pin what? GPIO pin 15. So when we come back over here, and let me get back to where you can see everything. Okay. <clears throat> I think you can see that. So it's 15, pin 15 that we're going to do. And then what are we going to do? We're going to say that it is a pin dot out, out all uppercase like that. So red LED <coughs> is pin 15. It's an output. Now what I want to do is let's just see if we can turn it on. How would we do that? LED <coughs> dot value and let's make it a one. All right. So now. Hold your breath. LED. Ah, not LED. Doesn't count. <coughs> Doesn't count as an error if you catch it before you run it. So let's go here. This is red LED value. And that's a one. Hold your breath. Giddy up. Did you guys see that? Okay. We have created our first external circuit on the Pico W and we've turned an LED on. All right. 
<clears throat> well, if we can turn the LED on, then what do we want to do next? We want to turn the LED off. And so we can go like that, like that, and then we can run it. Giddy up. Look at that. What could we also do? We could do a while true. When is true true? True is always true. And then how do we put something in that while loop? We tab over. Also, we don't forget our colon. And then anything that we put down here, <clears throat> anything that we put down here tabbed over, it's going to continue to run over and over. And so now what I will do is red LED dot value one. What is the problem if I do that? It's going to run too quickly. So I need to say from time import sleep. <clears throat> and then here I am going to say sleep one. And then here I'm going to say <clears throat> sleep two. And then if I run this, it should blink. <clears throat> Giddy up, look at that. All right, guys, we are really making great progress. Okay, so we have learned how to interact with our GPIO pins. We've learned about the breadboard and we have in fact written, we have in fact written our very first program that controls an external component. Now, like I say, when you look inside of this, there is just some incredible richness of componentry. And as we go through this class, we're going to be using more and more and more incredible components, but it's all going to kind of go by the game plan that we did today. We kind of draw up a schematic, then we hook it up on the breadboard and then we program it up. <clears throat> okay, guys, I need to give you a homework assignment for next week. And what that homework assignment is, is for you to create a little circuit with an external LED that blinks SOS. Okay, now it needs to be in a loop. So it goes SOS, SOS, SOS. And then also what would be very interesting is if you go in and do a little bit of research, not just, a, you know, not just do a simple obvious thing, but, but kind of do research understanding how long should the light be on, what the space between it should be, what should the space between the S and the O be. Look a little bit into the timing and see if you can come up with a really good timing. Then what your assignment is, is make a short video of your solution, even if it's as simple as just pointing your phone at your screen and then pointing it at the circuit, even if it's as simple as that, show your solution, upload your solution to YouTube and your upload link back to this video. And then in this video, down in, the, uh, down in the comments, leave a comment that links back to your homework solution. And then you guys start look, <clears throat> you guys start looking at each other's homework solution and making comments about, oh, I saw you did this or that. We're trying to develop a little bit of a sense of community in this, uh, in, in this series of lessons. And also then you guys can kind of start helping each other out as the homework assignments start getting more and more complicated and more and more difficult. You guys have kind of learned each other. You kind of met each other and you can maybe converse a little bit on the on the homeworks that you're trying to work on. Guys, I hope you are having as much fun taking these classes as I am making them. If you enjoyed this lesson, give us a thumbs up. Also, it always helps us if you leave a comment down below. If you've not already, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. When you subscribe, ring that bell so you will get notifications of future lessons. And as always, share this lesson with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later. <laughs>